Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks Icehawks podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook. Download the app and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page and our podcast at your preferred podcast app. I am rushing through the intros today because we have a number of special guests. We're going to be joined later in the show by Blackhawks and Icehawks defenseman Alex Vlasic. But to start... We are now joined by IceHawks head coach, Andre Sorensen. Coach, thanks for taking some time out. I know uh, things are busy right now, so thanks for being with us. Yeah, no problem. It's great, it's great to be on. Well, Coach, the uh, last month or so of the season, it got a little hairy there, got a little tight in the standings, came down to the final day. Uh, but how is that necessarily – that, could that be a good thing for this team that's kind of had to play playoff hockey now for the last couple weeks just to get there? And now you've got an old foe in Iowa waiting for you. Yeah, I think so for sure, right? I mean, we kind of the game's been on the line every every uh, the last feels like the last, like you said, five six weeks here, and even throughout the season, I think we had a ton of games in overtime. I think or we almost broke a record for that. We've been played 24, 25 games that went into overtime. So, yeah, we're battle tested for sure. Speaking, you know, of of Iowa series, you guys seven of your twelve games against them went past regulation, but that seemed to be the norm this year <laughs> against everybody. But you took seventeen, uh, fifteen out of a possible twenty four points against them. Very tight series. You're not going to fool anybody. Neither, you guys know what to expect. You played twelve times. It's a heated rivalry. What's it going to take for that to, to get two wins against these guys over the next couple of days? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's gonna, but it's gonna definitely gonna test our patience, right? They're they're really defensively structured team. They have good goaltending, um, so they play kind of they pack it in a little bit, and so we got to make sure that we're staying patient with our game plan and and uh, let's not feed their transition. We saw you guys really kind of uh, get back in the swing of the solid play once uh, Reichel and Vlasic, and you got some of those reinforcements back. As a head coach, when your best players get called up to the NHL, how do you how do you deal with that? Because obviously you're losing your best players and they're really not being replaced with anything. How do you manage that when it happens during the course of a season? Uh, great question. Yeah, well, first, <laughs> well, you, you're happy for the players, right? Uh, that's the big. I mean, in American hockey, that's our job to make sure guys get up and they're ready to go, and that they're developing with us. Um, but you know, in terms of for the coaches, you know, it's next man up mentality i think the guys that that have been through it all year that have been down here with us most of the year have been great i think that uh you know we brought some guys up from indy fuel our east coast league affiliate and they filled their they filled in and did a great job as well so it's kind of a just a group effort um but um yeah some you know it, it was definitely a revolving door there for a while but we we got through it and one of the one of the biggest things that you know the Blackhawks as an organization are kind of focusing on this season is is, is development, and um, I just wanted to kind of get your your take on things because you know the the AHL that's kind of, that's a development league mostly. I know there's a lot of uh, you know more veteran players that play in the league as well uh, that want to you know continue to to push and and get into the NHL. But in terms of you know development and kind of the the continuity that the organization has what what has it been like this year um you know with 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 Kyle Davidson fully as the as the GM and Luke Richardson now as as the head coach in Chicago what is the the kind of the, the messaging and focus on the development been like this season uh as compared to maybe last season uh, well, I mean, I think that's another great question. I think, I mean, Luke and Kyle have both been great for me in terms of uh, kind of just letting me know what they want to see from us down here, the habits and the concepts that they want us to kind of follow. And I think that's been the biggest thing for us to, uh, there have been some uh, 
new things and adjustments in terms of some of that stuff. But I think it's been great. And then we have a great development staff as well, led by Mark Eaton. And uh, we have guys coming in uh, daily, uh, weekly, monthly, and work with the players. So it helps us as a staff as well. But uh, uh, in terms of different from years past, I think it's a little bit more focused on maybe the accountability in terms of uh, – uh, it's not just you don't just go play, right? You got to have uh, you got to do you got to earn it a little bit more, and you know I think uh, you know some of these guys have been with us for most of the year. Kind of you saw Reichel come up there in spurts, but then once he came up towards the end of the year, I thought he did great up there and uh, just um, overripening, if you want to call it that, has been uh, the messaging. Well, it's it's interesting you mentioned Reichel, and that's the guy who. We were all sort of keeping an eye on the most from a distance. And at the, at the end of the season, Kyle Davidson was talking about really everything, but talked about Reichel and said that they kept him in Rockford because he had some habits they wanted to correct. Um, and he says he absolutely corrected him in that second and third call-up. But what were some of the specific things you worked on with Lucas? Um, you used the term over-ripening, which I think is great. What were the things that he fixed this season in Rockford? Well, I mean, with Lucas, it's, he's, he's a special player in a lot of ways, just so dynamic off the rush. And I think we all see the stuff that he can do uh, with the pucks on a stick. And he plays with such a high pace, right? So I think the biggest thing that we would talk to him about is just learning, you know, just staying on and competing on the right side of the puck and making sure that he's engaged in those battles. And then also his reaction to if there is turnovers, everybody has turnovers, everybody makes mistakes. Just the biggest thing is how he reacts to those mistakes after. And if he's part of the equation to help the team get the puck back, which was the thing that we focused on, and he did a great job with that. We have a question from uh, people watching us on YouTube. Steve says, what's the difference you see in Lucas Reichel since he's been in the NHL? Uh, well, I think the biggest thing, kind of like just uh, getting you know physically stronger, feeling more comfortable in battles. And I did think that, um, the thing that we just touched on here, just his reaction uh, to defend uh, when the, when needed, right? Uh, it could have been him, it could have been his teammates. Something happens, turnovers, just his reaction to get back and help the team out, uh, I think has come a long way. You know, we've heard a lot since day one when Luke Richardson joined the organization about building a culture. <clears throat> and I know that kind of starts with you guys in Rockford. And part of that I think this year was the, the management went out and made an effort to get more AHL veterans for you down there. Guys like David Gust and Brent Sini, Luke Philp, who've been huge contributors throughout the season. How key have those guys been not only on the ice, but in the locker room with the younger guys and how important are they to, to uh, a long playoff push here? Yeah, they've been massive to be honest with you. And I think, uh, you know, for, for those guys to be in that locker room, it helps the younger guys, it helps the Reichels, it helps the Vlasics. Uh, because, you know, we as the coaches, you know, we can get nagging at times and <laughs> we don't want to be uh, in these guys' ears. Sometimes hearing it from a teammate, hearing it from an older guy or someone pulling guys aside and just uh, creating a certain culture in there in terms of the habits that, if you look at a Philp or, or a Gus or Sini, their habits are excellent in terms of how they play. Uh, and it just uh, kind of rubs off on everybody else. Well, we're going to talk to uh, Alex Vlasic later in the in the show, but just kind of wanted to, to get your uh, assessment of, of his season because he came in last year uh, from college and, and played the last about two, three weeks in the NHL, and we were all really impressed with you know the transition he made and then kind of were surprised that he didn't start the year in, in the NHL and then played essentially the entire season with uh, with, with Rockford. From uh, the start of the year to this point, what, what have you seen in, in his uh, development as, as a young defenseman? Uh, well, there's lots, but I think that the biggest thing is just we encouraged him when the puck was, is on his stick to be, uh, for lack of a better term, more creative. <laughs> uh, we're trying to get, we, we encourage him to make more plays with the puck and say, skate the puck more, uh, take initiatives with the puck. Uh, feeling comfortable with the puck and I think he's made a tremendous stride there and you know right now he's running our first power play and I think he's done a great job with that where earlier in the year uh, that wasn't really something that he was part of and so that's part of his growth um, and you know he, he's such a good defender because of his size and his mobility it covers so much ice uh, so adding that element of just being a breakout machine if you want to call it that way has been great I'm going to quickly get into one of your 
favorite topics and, and talk quickly about the goaltenders. I know you love talking goaltenders, but um, <laughs> how, how, we got to see a little bit. Blackhawks fans got to see a little bit of both Arvid and Jackson up here, and they both had some some short bursts of success here in their limited time. How has the progression of both of those still pretty inexperienced goaltenders at the professional level been this season? Yeah, I mean, I think they've both been great. I think their progress has been awesome to watch. I think if, you know, if you start with uh, Stauber there, you know, he the first full season of professional hockey, I think coming in uh, start of the year, there's some things he had to learn. Um, he did that, and then, you know, he obviously had a good run-up in Chicago, and then he keep progressing down with us. And then Arvid had a little bit more meat on his bone, you know, coming in after playing last year. Kind of a tough season to start. Obviously didn't do as well up there as he wanted or we, anybody wanted. And I think that uh, coming back with us, uh, he got injured, uh, battling through a major injury, which he hasn't done before. Um, but right now, the way he's playing right now, he's kind of back to where he was last year. And it's, uh, it's, he's been awesome for our group. Yeah, that was uh, – Soderblom came up here in Chicago when the injuries occurred uh, and looked really good to start. And then it seemed like as the season went on and he was kind of called on to be the guy every night, I don't want to use the word, the word overwhelmed, but it sort of had that feeling like he was kind of riding on momentum to start, you know, and just kind of, I'm here, I got to do it. And then as, as he settled into the role, it got a little more difficult for him. When a guy comes down in his experience, I don't want to say failure – but struggles at the NHL level, um, how do you kind of recover that? How do you regather that and get the, get the kid feeling good about himself again? Yeah, great question. You know, Arvid is the mental, you know, he, he is really strong mental. I give him a lot of credit. He is very even keeled. He, he kind of is really good at understanding what he can control and things he can't control. And it's even within games, right? There's you talk to him, and there's he realizes there's nothing I could do about that goal. They hit it off a shin pad or something, and he kind of just shrugs it off. And and that's kind of his bigger picture mentality too, right? I think he realized that, that didn't go as well as some of the things he could have done something about, some of the things he couldn't do anything about. And filtering through all that is probably one of his strengths. I did want to ask um, about some of the players that we may or may not see. Uh, play in the, in the playoffs, but that a lot of Blackhawks fans uh, do have their eyes on that are with the Ice Dogs right now. Um, guys like Drew Camezzo and, and Ryder Ralston and, and Jalen Lipen, some of these young guys that uh, you know are making the transition to the professional game. Um, they're with the team now. What what do you have them working on as as they kind of transition and haven't been with the club all year, but are there but are now there here at the end of the year? And as you guys are getting ready for the playoffs, like. Do you think about factoring them into the lineup, or do you want to keep them uh, just around the the rest of the team, kind of getting the the atmosphere of the playoffs? Yeah, a little bit of a combination. They're they're definitely in the mix to be you know be in the lineup, depending on how deep we go here. I think Ryder has been here a little bit longer. Uh, he got cleared a couple of weeks ago from that uh, injury he had, so he's been practicing with the team for a couple of weeks here uh, daily. So just getting him integrated within the concepts and the system that we play. Um, which is different from where he came from in Notre Dame. Um, so he's definitely in the mix. Uh, and then Leip, Leips as well. He has been he just got in town uh, about a week ago, I believe. And he's been around the team a little bit. He came on the trip with us uh, to Grand Rapids just to see how the older guys uh, prepare themselves and be around the, the video sessions to see how we do things. And uh, depending on how long ago they progress here, they're definitely in the mix here. Uh, they do do some extra work here on the side with uh, – our development group as well as as well as practicing with the team. I've always been curious, you know, when you're when you're coaching the AHL team, and, and probably changes team to team. So I'll ask about the Blackhawks. Do, does Kyle Davidson give you any input on line combinations or anything like that? Does he say, "Hey, I want to see this guy and this guy together," or is that totally up to you to determine? Uh, I mean, we have a great dialogue. I think you know. I, we would talk, you know, about different decisions, and, and I think that uh, for the most part, they let me do what I want, you know, in terms of that. But there's definitely, uh, you know, we have dialogues, and we, I kind of know what they want to look for, and with the guys that we got to take care of, and then we got to make sure they're uh, getting their minutes, and um, you know. But other than that, it's been really good. We're going to let you go soon. We got a couple of questions uh, from the audience again. Uh, out of the current Blackhawks prospects, who are you looking forward to coaching that you haven't yet? 
Oh, great question. <laughs> <laughs> I think that depends on who comes down, right? You never know what comes out of camp, right? But, uh, you know, obviously, Rolston, like you guys mentioned, Lightman is here. Um, see what happens with those defensemen. We got uh, Nolan Allen coming in, you know, to camp next year. We got uh, Del Mastro coming in. So we'll, we'll see, see where they fall uh, after camp. If they end up with us, uh, looking forward to that, you know. So those are probably some names that just popped to my head here. And then Jason wants to know your favorite Rockford restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe that's the sweet. There's a Swedish breakfast place there, a pancake house or something. <laughs> Oh, nice. That there sounds you, good. Yeah. That sounds good to me. You can do a show uh, from there. I, wa- I wanted to get your, uh, <laughs> I wanted to get your opinion on the, the AHL playoff system because, uh, you know, obviously with with everything that's happened over the last few years, it was altered. But, you know, with the with the couple of play in rounds and and how you know there's like 20 teams that make the postseason, and then it gets cut down to 16 eventually. What's your take on, on, on that? Do you, do you kind of like to have a little bit more of the, uh, you know, adventurous playoff system or, or you know, or is it, is it kind of easier just saying, oh, top four from each division, move on? Well, personally, I really like it this year because we ended up in the fifth <laughs> spot, right? So uh, last year we were in the fourth spot, so I didn't like it as much. Uh, but um, I, I, think it's, I think it makes it interesting. I think especially in the American Hockey League where uh, – uh, it's a development league uh, to give the players, uh, the younger players, the experience of being part of it. But it makes the best of it makes for an interesting, you know, quick three game series here for sure. So I think, uh, in a fan's perspective, and and, and uh, you know, as a coach, you want to you want to be in those situations. And you know, you get in, we're in the fifth spot, but you know, we feel pretty good about our group here, so we feel like we can make a run. So I think uh, it benefits uh, teams that end up in that, you know, right right on the cusp, so to speak. You think uh, having to play in this play-in best of three series last season, uh, you guys beat Texas in two games. Do you think that gives you guys an advantage having some players that went through it last year? Um, yeah, great question. I, I think I think it does. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many guys are left, but I don't think there's too many. But there's like five or six guys, I believe, right? Arvid and and Rikes and Philper and Regula, and yeah. So I think it helps for sure. Yeah. So the coach of a rebuilding NHL team is probably one of the most unpleasant jobs in sports. But I'd imagine at the same time, being the coach of a rebuilding team at the AHL level is pretty great because you've got a lot of good young players that are there already and a lot of good young players uh, coming in. Is this something you're sort of uh, relishing this opportunity, the guys you rattled off and who knows who they're going to draft uh, you know, coming up here in June. You've got a lot of good, young, exciting players coming your way. Is that put, do you feel pressure of that, or are you just sort of saying, bring me all the good players you can and, and let's, let's win? No, I think, it's, uh, I think uh, we're fortunate to be able to work with the amount of talent we have. And, uh, they're young. They have, stuff, they have stuff they need to learn, and there's, there's things that they have to uh, – they have to grow up, right? In a lot of ways, off the ice, on the ice, and I think being part of that, uh, it's it's a lot of fun. And uh, you know, the big again, biggest thing for us is when they graduate and go up there, we're we're just happy for them and proud of them. All right, coach, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us here on CHGO Blackhawks. Good luck against the Wild, and we'll hopefully talk to you down the road in the next round. That would be great. Sounds good, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Thanks, Thanks, coach. Uh, that was Andre Sorensen, head coach of the Rockford Icehawks. Standing by is Icehawks defenseman Alex Vlasic. Before we get to him, we've got to tell you about our friends at Shady Rays. Yes, Shady Rays. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead. It was here. Now it's gone with the premium polarized shades at an affordable <laughs> price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers world-class pro- product that's just as good, I say even better than any expensive pair that I've ever worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. That's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you break your pair or lose them, even on day one, Shady Rays will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Together with their customers, Shady Rays is providing much-needed support to nonprofit 
partners across the United States through the Shady Rays Impact Program. Everything from donating meals to building play sets for pediatric cancer patients to providing young adults with MS, the outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Shady Rays is making an impact in your community and others like it for now and for years to come. So now that you're going to look great in your Shady Rays, you're going to feel great because you're doing good things for others. If you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back. And an exclusive for our CHGO listeners, because Shady Rays loves you almost as much as we do. Shady <laughs> Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com, use the promo code CHGO for 50% off two or more pairs of Polaroid sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of people. A lot of stars. And uh, the Combat Energy Efficiency Program is committed to helping people and businesses in the communities they serve by helping manage energy usage and lower energy bills now and into the future. That's right, Jay. ComEd offers a wide variety of initiatives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial, industrial, and public sector customers of all sizes across their territories. ComEd also offers free facility assessments that can help find energy-saving opportunities like for HVAC systems, commercial kitchen equipment, or industrial processes. Tell me more. Well, an authorized engineer will work with you to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs. These can be done in person or virtually and last approximately two hours. Within three to four weeks, customers will receive a report detailing energy efficiency projects that they can start working on immediately. Each recommendation will include estimated savings, cost savings, project costs, potential incentives, and simple payback. If you own a business, do not wait. Get started saving money and energy today for energy saving tips, lighting incentives, or to schedule your free facility assessment, go to comed.com slash powering biz, B-I-Z. Comed.com slash powering biz. Absolutely. You you said it right. Schedule it today. I will. I'm going to. Swear to God, I'm going to do it. All right, next up on our uh, guest list is uh, Blackhawks and Ice Hogs defenseman Alex Vlasic. Alex, hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us. Yep, yep. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah, sounds great. We got you good. Perfect. Yeah, I'm doing well. How about you? Very good, very good. good. Uh, looking forward to this uh, series against the uh, Iowa Wild. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I don't think we played them enough this year. I think it was like 12 times or something earlier in the year, so. Um, yeah, it'll be a good battle for sure. We're all looking forward to it. What was, uh, you know, I, I, you were up here uh, in, in, in Chicago for a few games to, uh, to end the season, uh, after playing, you know, the, the whole AHL season basically with Rockford, how was it, you know, being up here in Chicago and then heading back, knowing where the ice hogs were in the standings and, you know, kind of needing those last couple of, uh, of wins to secure a playoff spot? Um, yeah, I mean, it was definitely, uh, it kind of felt good, you know, me and Rakes getting sent down to, uh, to, yeah, make sure, make sure we got in. And, um, yeah, I felt like we had a little bit of responsibility to, to come back and, and, uh, help the boys out. Cause yeah, I mean, the past couple months we've, uh, we've definitely been struggling a little bit here and there, but, um, you know, I think these past games that, that we've been here for, everybody's kind of seemed to, to find their groove and, um, you know, we're excited for sure. We love the group of guys that we have here. So, um, yeah, it's my first first pro playoff experience. So uh, it's just kind of, yeah, a lot of excitement for me going into it. You know, as this season began, um, I think a lot of us, as we're trying to imagine what the lineup's going to look like and what the deep pairings might be, a lot of us had you penciled in for a spot in Chicago. Um, I'm sure you were maybe feeling the same way because things seemed to go pretty well for you at the end of last year. What was that like when you were told – Hey, we're going to start your season in Rockford and and have you play big minutes down there. Um, yeah, I mean, I think coming in, my goal was was definitely to to make the team, and um, you know, I started off there for the first week, but I think we just had some some injuries and stuff. I think the plan was was for me to go down, but um, yeah, I mean, it was definitely you know at first a little bit of a disappointment for me. Like I said, I kind of wanted to make the team come in and. Um, that was the expectation for myself, but, uh, after they sent me down, I kind of just tried to, um, you know, enjoy the moment, live in the moment and and really try to explore my game here in Rockford. And and like you said, just play some big minutes and, uh, have a little bit more responsibility in a situation where I'm, um, you know, I'm going to be playing quite a bit more and, uh, kind of having the puck on my stick a lot more than I would up there. 
And I don't want to spend too much time on last year, but there was a moment that stood out to me. We talked to Derek King very early in your call up last year. And I don't remember what the exact quote was, but he sort of indicated that you just weren't ready to play in the NHL and you were kind of in and out of the lineup. Then all of a sudden, like things seem to really flip for you. And all of a sudden you're paired with Seth Jones and you're playing really well. What was the change that happened for you from those first few games to that last stretch where they really couldn't take you off the ice? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was a little bit of just getting, getting that confidence, uh, being a little, uh, a lot more comfortable playing in the NHL. I think the first couple of games, uh, the first three games I think I played where it was like six minutes across the board, like every game. So, um, you know, it's definitely tough to kind of, to get into the game, um, playing, playing that little. And, uh, at the same time, like, uh, just kind of having that wow factor of, of really being in the NHL and not really realizing that like this is the league that you've been watching for, you know, 15 years growing up um, and you're surrounded by these guys that you've been watching for so long. So I think it was just kind of me getting a more comfortable with the, with the pace of the play and the speed of the play. And I think, um, you know, being scratched, I think I was scratched for maybe like two weeks straight um, after my first two games. I think that honestly helped me quite a bit, like just playing in practice, playing against other guys that weren't playing or that they were injured and really kind of getting used to uh, how smart and how good these guys actually are. Back off of that question a little bit. <clears throat> How? What were the kind of differences you noticed in your own game, having played those few games last year, then spending almost the entire season with the Ice Hogs? Then you get back to Chicago at the end of this season. Was it a little easier? Were you more confident? Was it an easier transition? Like, what were kind of the differences from your first taste of the NHL to your second taste? Um. Yeah, it was definitely a lot more. Uh, a lot more chill, I'd say, like for me uh, coming in and, and not really being too nervous. Like I remember at the start of last year, just always kind of I felt like I was kind of walking around on eggshells, which I feel like is pretty normal, especially when you got some big names in the locker room like Taser and Kaner and stuff like that. So um, I feel like this year was a lot easier for me to just make the transition and not really like worry about that stuff, not really worry about the different atmosphere um, and like playing in such a, a large like venue with like a bunch of fans and I kind of just jumped right in and started playing hockey like uh like there was no no difference really noticed uh last night you were wearing a a letter for the team in your first professional year to to kind of be in that in that leadership role what has that meant as that's developed this year for for you um yeah I mean I think you know I I got the letter we had some we had some guys uh at the time who were injured or got called up and there was one game where I got it and then somebody jumped back in the lineup and uh, they got it back. And then it was kind of yeah, back and forth between a couple of guys. And then it kind of stuck on my chest when we had a bunch of guys uh, up with the Hawks. And I think we did some guys out as well for whatever reason. And um, yeah, I mean, I just tried to, yeah, I wore a letter last year at BU. So kind of just tried to do the same thing. And um, you know, I'd say I'm more so a lead by example guy. I'm not, uh, you know, crazy vocal or anything um, in the bench or in the locker room, but I'll definitely speak up when, when something needs to be said. And, um, yeah, I just try to be a good leader and, and uh, set a good example. We talked to Anders about this. You know, you, again, you get sent down sort of unexpectedly to start the season. Uh, Reichel comes up midway through the year, plays great, and then the Hawks send him down. Well, we concede because he was playing too well and he was screwing up the plans. Uh, they say they didn't have room on the top six. Was that was that experience you had early in the season, something you could bring to him and say, hey, look, you know, it's just business. Don't take it personal. How did you, you know, and maybe you didn't do anything, but did you offer uh, Reichel any advice? Because he had to be feeling a little bit down after that demotion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think everybody kind of knew. I think he knew as well that um, – yeah, there, it wasn't really behind, like, there wasn't any motive behind, like, doing it for his play. I think, like you said, he was he was pretty nasty in those in that stretch he was playing up there. Uh, he looked really good. So I think a lot of the boys were kind of pumping his tires. Um, but, yeah, I think him, himself, he knew that, uh, you know, it wasn't so much about him. It was just more about, um, like, their, their long-term plan for him. So I don't think he was too worried about it. I talking to Anders earlier, he was talking about your game and, and kind of the responsibilities added to you. Some of that being wanting you to be more creative when the puck's on your stick and you've kind of developed into the, you know, a power play quarterback here. How's that been good uh, going for you this season? Um, yeah, it's been a cool experience. I've never, 
you know, at BU, I kind of uh, played on the power play a little bit, but never, never that like one power play spot uh, or power play one spot rather. Um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, at first it was a little bit challenging. You know, I, I kind of felt like I was uh, catering a little bit too much towards like the other players on the unit. And I feel like now I'm kind of starting to, to feel really comfortable with a puck on my stick up there and knowing that like I have just as much of an impact and I can make just as much of an impact with the puck um, as any other guy out there. So um, yeah, it's just kind of getting comfortable up there, trying some new things, me and Anders. And uh, we talked the other day just about kind of being a little bit more of a threat up there, shooting the puck, maybe faking a little bit more um, and giving, giving Rakes, giving Rocco Grimaldi the, a little bit more time with the puck and uh you know hopefully that'll open up some plays yeah so uh i think we've we've done pretty well the past couple of games um on the power play and uh, i'm excited to, to continue it how do you feel about your latest call up how do you think you played uh i thought i played pretty well the, the first game i thought was one of my better ones i think i i jumped in i i felt really confident like defensively um you know, it, my puck play definitely not where I would uh, would like for it to be right now. But I mean, I think with with a little bit more time, it'll get there for sure. Um, and then I think, you know, in between, you know, those like three, four, five games that I played uh, in the middle there, I thought I played all right, like nothing crazy. And then the last game, I thought I've had my best game, just kind of doing my thing a little bit more, like I would here in Rockford, just kind of playing on my toes, playing confident. Um, skating the puck up a little bit more, and um, yeah, I, th I felt uh, confident about the way that I the way I walked out of that one. Something you said earlier struck me when you talked about last season coming into the locker room, and and there's Jonathan Taves, and there's Patrick Kane, and and that kind of uh, being obviously intimidating. You know, you got two Hall of Famers, two of the best players of their generation, um, and you said it felt a little different this year. Was that because those guys had been, you know, Taves was out? Kane had been traded. How was the feeling different? Did it did it feel like more of a level playing field? Or I'm not trying to because this is something that Kyle Davidson mentioned at the end of the year. He said part of the reason to move on from Kane and Taves is to sort of clear the decks for this new generation of leadership where they don't feel like they have to come in and defer to those guys. And it wasn't necessarily a criticism of either of them, more of a it's impossible for a young guy like Alex Vlasic or Lucas Reichel or whoever to come in and see those two guys and really assert themselves. Would you agree with that assessment? Is it when you got guys with that much, you know, all those skins on the wall, it's got to be hard for a young player to come in and assert themselves. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think you got you got guys that, that definitely do that, you know, whether it be, you know, some of the guys I used to play with like Jack Hughes, Trevor Zegers. I feel like everybody can kind of see that they came into the league right away with with that, you know, confidence and um you know, that idea that like they're the man and um you know I, I think props to them that's definitely something to that i you know kind of need to do a little bit more but yeah i mean right away you're, you're playing with with patrick kane i mean you're gonna you're not gonna feel comfortable um you know being being your same self that you would be around you know somebody that you're playing with here like one of your one of your best buddies on the team it's yeah, like you said, it's just impossible. Like, I, I look up to this guy. I've looked up to him for so long. He's such a good player. So, yeah, you're definitely going to defer to him, whether that be off the ice but on the ice as well. I mean, anytime he's open, I'm going to try and, you know, sling the puck right on his tape because he's probably the best, you know, this is the best case scenario having the puck on his stick. So, um, yeah, I mean, to now, uh, like this season, um, to the games that we play, that I played now, like, it felt a lot different in the locker room, just a younger vibe, like a lot of new players as well. So I kind of felt a little bit more comfortable and just even like being around those guys last year and then like a little bit in the training camp and stuff, it kind of gave me that that confidence and like being a lot more comfortable around them. I imagine, you know, the feeling has to be just don't screw it up, right? <laughs> and, and the easiest way to not screw it up is to get the puck to the Hall of Famer because this year we were watching it, even as like Max Domi, came in in his first few what maybe month or so he was always trying to get the puck to Kane and that was and that's a guy who's been in the league what six seven years already you know that that's a that's a factor for everybody but yeah I think that's interesting and that that really stood out from uh from Luke Richards or from Kyle Davidson when he mentioned that you know the whole clearing the deck concept with the young players so it's good to see uh that you're feeling more comfortable and that there are some guys you know that this year have sort of made that jump and it's got that younger feel that's that's really encouraging for the future yeah, for yeah. sure. Kind of piggyback on, you know, having the you show up to your first NHL game and there's Patrick Kane and, and Jonathan Taves sitting there. 
uh, one of our, our listeners, Steve, asked, uh, has there been anybody like that you've played against when you step on the ice against them the first time? you kind of starstruck or more like, wow, I can't believe that's so-and-so. Has, that, has you had any of those moments? Yeah, I mean, right away from the start, I, I started against Minnesota in Minnesota. And, uh, yeah, I lined up with uh, uh, against Zuccarello, Kaprizov, and Hartman. And that was just like crazy. Like I, I, I was, I've never been more nervous in my life. That first shift, uh, I, I just like, <laughs> like shaking. Um, but yeah, I mean, Kaprizov is definitely up there. Um, it, yeah, it was uh, the next game we played Winnipeg, and then I, yeah, going against like Shifley, uh, Connor, all the like, Ealers. Like those are just some like all stars in the league. And yeah, it's it's crazy to kind of go from playing college hockey to all of a sudden you're. You're playing against these uh, all stars in the NHL, best players in the world. I'm going to assume that that feeling eventually kind of goes away, and it's just like, hey, man, it's just another game. Let's, I got to do my job. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I think I, I definitely need to get a little bit better at that too. I think sometimes I, I kind of do give a little bit too much respect uh, to like some of the top players out there, and I kind of have to go out there and uh, assert myself and, and know that that I'm there for a reason and I can play with them uh, anytime. Two of the guys that um, that you've had some, some some time playing with and and kind of you know growing your game alongside when you've been with Chicago are uh, Connor Murphy and, and Seth Jones and those are two of the more senior players with the with the organization now. Um, what what has it been like playing with them, being in the locker room with them, and, and kind of learning a little bit from them as they're kind of seen as like you know now that that Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taze are gone, uh, Seth Jones and Connor Murphy kind of seem like the more veteran and and kind of leaders in 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 the locker room moving forward um yeah so i was training with uh with murph quite a bit um at fifth third and uh yeah he was he was awesome to work with and just kind of seeing his work ethic i think he's he's definitely up there for like one of the hardest workers i've ever i've ever um i've ever seen in hockey he's always um you know trying to take his game to the next level off the ice or not on the ice as well so um, kind of just seeing his habits um, at the rink and uh, what he does to get himself ready for games and after games, just recovering. Um, him, him and Jonesy as well. Yeah, they just they're they're really you know like kind of sounds um, I don't know what the word is like cheesy I guess, but they're they're pros. You know, like they know how to they know how to um, treat their body and, and make sure that they're going one hundred percent for every single game. So it's, it's fun to kind of be alongside them and, and learn from them and just kind of pick up some little habits here and there. Oh, well, before we let you go, we had a question uh, from one of our listeners that said, want to know if you ever got your dinner from Colin Blackwell for giving him number 43. Um, yeah, you can, it's a funny story. He, uh, in the summer one day, so I, I live in the suburbs and, and he was training in the summer when he came in and, he had a place in the city. He asked me to come out for a steak dinner, but it was at like it was at like six o'clock on like a weekday, and I knew there was gonna be a bunch of traffic. So I said that I would uh, that I would have to take it another time, and I, he kind of chirps me for that um, <laughs> quite a bit just for for turning down his dinner. But um, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure I'll get something at some point. I'll, I'll have to talk to him about it. Oh, that's a pro move. Like, hey man, your steak dinner is ready. Meet me in 15 minutes in the heart of downtown. Oh, yeah. you didn't make it? Oh man, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that what a come on. Well, yeah, not, don't let yeah. him forget about that. Forty three. Yeah. That's a that's an in demand number on the NHL. All the greats wear forty three. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to hear him about it. Here. Definitely. I've I've got a selfish question before before we let you go, Alex. I. In the last couple of weeks ago, I moved uh, to the wonderful town of Wilmette, and I know you're familiar with the area. Where do I gotta where 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 do I gotta go to get like the best breakfast in that area? I'm still trying to learn my surroundings. Sarkis Cafe, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sarkis isn't bad. I think they might have closed it down though. Um, I don't think so. Oh, uh, maybe not. Yeah, I haven't been there in a while, but um, I don't know. I feel like in Wilmette, there's there's not too much. In Winneka, there's I don't know, like I don't know. There's a place like Green Bay Cafe. It's like really small. It's like the size of like a closet almost, but it's actually got some pretty good breakfast. Um, yeah, I don't know. And well, man, I'm trying to think. I feel like you might have to go to like Evanston or like Winneka around the area. I'll have to. I might have to get back to you on that one. I'll need, to, I'll need to get a pay increase before they let me in Winneka, but that, we'll figure it out. 
All right, Alex. Thanks, man. We appreciate your time. Good luck, and uh, we'll see you on the other side, man. Take care. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. That was uh, Blackhawks and Icehawks defenseman Alex Velasic. He was good. I like that kid. I, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the stuff about you know starting his career and and, and developing and the Reichel stuff. And I, you know, he kind of took us there with the Taves and Kane locker room stuff. Um, and I, I just want to be clear. Like I don't think anyone means it as a criticism. You could just say insert legendary player here, Mario Lemieux, Mark Messier, whatever. That those guys being present is going to be intimidating, and it's good to hear that this year, even with you know Kane had been gone, but Tay's kind of out, that that young leadership is already starting to emerge and make their voices heard a little bit out of necessity, yeah, because those two veteran leaders were gone for whatever reason, and but they jumped at it and did it. They didn't just didn't say, well, we're just going to sit here and not know what to do. Right. They jumped in and did it. It's also uh, also know that. Uh you know, that's something we've talked about and speculated on and kind of getting a little justified that both Kyle Davidson and Vlasic talks about it too. Uh, it's, yeah, a very interesting dynamic. And just in case you're wondering, we didn't, I don't know if we mentioned it or not, but that, that Iowa-Rockford best of three game series starts Wednesday night in Rockford. It's the only game of the series in Rockford. Games two and three, if necessary, will be in Iowa. If you're not local in Rockford and you want to check those games out uh ahl tv uh ahl.tv 29.99 for the playoff package you get every single calder cup playoff game not just the ice hogs but every playoff game between game one to the last game of the calder cup finals for only 29.99 that's a pretty good deal uh that's the best way to check out if you want to watch the ice hogs playoff run and hopefully they give you your money's worth, and they play, you know, a couple of rounds here. So <laughs> that'd, that'd be, be nice. Ni- yeah. That'd be very nice. But and this is this year is different than last year in the playoff playing round, right? Because they didn't they didn't go on the road last. I think year. it had more to do with the fact that the the distance was so far. Sure. That to save money on travel, you weren't going to go to Texas the one for one game right. and come all the way up here. Okay. Since it's you know a three Iowa. hour bus ride, they 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 actually give Rockford the home game most of the series. Across the AHL, were the bottom seed got the first game, and then the, the better seed got the next two, mm. especially in those uh, Eastern Conference yeah. series. Considering those guys are all all twenty of those teams are within eight miles of each other, it seems <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was a little rarity last year, I think, just to save on cost going from Austin, Texas to Rockford for one game probably just didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, well, uh, ben- it benefits w- them now this year, though, having that first game yes. at you, home. You get that, you, like, whoever wins that game huge. is in control, but you win that home game, then you know, hey, all the pressure's on Iowa mm-hmm. in game two. Uh, should be fun, man. Those teams beat the crap out of each other this year. <laughs> they, don't not, they don't like each other. They played each other 12 times. Seven of those twelve games like went. Someone. Yeah, I mean, and seven <laughs> of those twelve games went in the overtime or beyond. It's going to be a really close series. Uh, they've got a fantastic young goaltender in Jesper Wallstedt, mm-hmm. who set uh, a franchise record for most starts by a teenager. <laughs> uh, so you know he's only eighteen, nineteen years old, and yeah. and he's he's a guy that I really wanted the Blackhawks to draft that first round. He was taken right before – well, no, that was the year they traded down. He, he was taken right before where they would have been. Where they would have been, But yeah. they traded – that was the year of the Seth Jones trade. But that was a guy I, w- I was really high on. I think he's going to be a star for the Minnesota Wild for years to come. So And they got Smelly Guy. Yeah, I don't – yeah, Cheeto, is he on, Cheeto Is boy. he on that uh, roster? I don't remember his I, name. I, or was he a – I couldn't read his name. My eyes Sam were Hintages. Stinky Sam. Ugh, <laughs> so Sam bad. Smentages. Stinky <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sam. I don't think he's on the roster. I think good. Uh, <laughs> they probably are like get this guy out of here. He smells yeah. like ass. <laughs> uh, like ass Greg too. mentioned uh, <laughs> AHL TV. If you've got like an Apple TV or a Fire Stick or whatever, a Roku, you can get that AHL TV app. You can also get the Fubo TV app there and watch 140 live channels of sports shows movies and news you can stream live tv from any device watch the most chicago sports for the lowest price and you can start doing it immediately with a seven day free trial go to fubo tv.com slash chgo that's f-u-b-o tv.com slash chgo it is the only 
streaming service in Chicago that offers you Marquee Sports Network. So if you want to watch the exciting Young Cubs, that's the only way to do it if you are a cord cutter. Fubo TV. They've also got all the games on NBC Sports Chicago for your Hawks and Bulls needs, everything there. Of course, you got your local channels for the NFL. You can add the Red Zone. It's got everything you need as sports uh, as it pertains to sports. You get a thousand hours of cloud DVR included at no extra charge. You got the NFL draft coming up, the NHL draft, the NHL and NBA playoffs are starting, and of course the Cubs on Marquee Sports Network. You can do it all with Fubo TV. Use the link in the description to sign up for 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. Again, that's FuboTV.com slash CHGO. Did you mention the uh, NBA playoffs? I may have. I think you did. All right, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, it is NBA playoff time. That means big hoops action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Get in on the excitement of every game with the touch of a button. New customers can make a $5 pregame money line bet and score $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. Plus, everyone can score a no-sweat same-game parlay every day during the NBA playoffs. Open the DraftKings Sportsbook app, opt in, and place a same-game parlay on any NBA game. If it doesn't hit, you'll get a bonus bet back up to $10. Download the app now and sign up with the code CHGO. New customers can make a $5 pregame money line bet and score $150 in bonus bets if their team doesn't if their team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code CHGO. All right, we've only got a few uh, minutes left. Dang. Oh, are you not done? Oh, yeah. Did you forget? Oh, disclaimer. Oh, that's good. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Massachusetts, call 1-800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplinema.org. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700 on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 and older in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Nailed it. Gotcha. I was giving you a chance to breathe. That's all. Ah. Speaking of uh, NBA playoffs starting, uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs are starting tonight. Yeah, Ah, I guess. Yes, and I I actually got in a a fun futures bet on the DraftKings. Uh, I took Connor McDavid plus eight hundred to win the Conn Smythe Trophy. I think that's good mm, value, right there. That would, I mean, you should could have parlayed that with the Oilers winning the Cup because that probably would be the case, right? Yeah, I thought about that after I placed the bet. <laughs> <laughs> it's it a little there's, sleepy when I placed. Unfortunately, that bet. there's no undo button on the DraftKings Sportsbook. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, <laughs> Connor McDavid's the kind of guy that could make it to the Stanley Cup final, still lose. That's and true. Still yeah, win you're the right. That is Smythe. true. It's if, happened a few times. If there's a player that could do it, it'd be him. I mean, there were people you, talking about him winning it last year, and they lost he didn't in the play Western in the Conference final. final. Yeah, he I wonder still if there the, are odds. Maybe, I don't know. I'm sure they exist somewhere <laughs> where you could bet him to win a Conn Smythe, but not the Cup. Probably. I wonder if that specific bet exists. Probably has I pretty wonder. good odds. Too. Yeah, we should reach out it to might our, not our be, buddies at, It at might not be Kings. specific to McDavid, but you, I'm sure there's probably some you could parlay future the Oilers, prop. Or you could parlay him winning the Conn Smythe and like, the Bruins winning the Cup. Yeah, but I, I'm saying like I bet there's probably a, a specific prop that says, like, Conn Smythe winner doesn't win Cup or something like yeah, that. Yeah, maybe. There's a lot of fun bets on there for the Stanley Cup playoffs. You could oh, bet, yeah. like, which player is going to lead each series in goals. That's so there's fun. a lot of fun. Or points. So you could bet on like that. that. So a lot of you don't have to necessarily bet on a specific team. You can bet on players that you think are going to do well. It's a lot of fun. I had to Speaking get some in of, today uh, for sure. betting and fantasy sports in the playoffs, reminder. Oh, yeah. We got our, our bracket. Yeah. Is, get uh, it now. Is, is alive and well. Over 100 brackets That's already, awesome. Awesome. and we still have a few hours before the game starts. Yeah, but as soon as the puck drops, it is closed. It's over. So you've got to get those bracket picks in. If you're trying to sign up, go to our Twitter account at chgo underscore Blackhawks. The link is right there. It is the pinned tweet. The password is CAPTAIN19, CAPTAIN, all caps, 19. That will get you into our league. And be sure to change your entry name to your email address so when you win... We can get in touch with you and get you the CHGO shirt of your choice. That is the prize at stake 
uh, for our bracket challenge. So make sure you jump in. But yeah, over 100 people already in. So uh, jump on that. It's all through uh, ESPN's fantasy site. So if you've got an ESPN login, very easy. If not, super easy to sign up and it's free to play. There's no cost to play. Mm -hmm. But jump in before the game starts tonight. With that in mind, we got to talk about these playoffs and make our predictions. I know we're a little short on time here. So we're going to rifle through them. Tonight we've got the... uh, We've got the Kings and Oilers. We've got the Stars and Wild. We've got the Hurricanes and Islanders and the Panthers and Bruins. Where do we want to start, fellas, with our predictions? Let's go top start. to bottom, the first games that we'll see on TV to the last games we'll see on TV tonight. Makes sense to me. So that means Hurricanes, we're starting Hurricanes Islanders, Islanders. Is the first game to puck, uh, uh, drop the puck. Carolina won three of the four regular season matchups between these two teams. Yeah. Their team built to win a Stanley Cup. Uh, no Svechnikov, no Pacioretty for the playoffs. Yeah, that hurts, tough. but they still won a very tough division. Yeah. And Blackhawk, great. Anti Ranta is getting the start in net tonight. That should be fun. Anti Ranta, 19 3 and 3 with a 2.23 and a 9 10 save percentage. Good for him. Dude. Good for him. That's awesome. One of the most likable <laughs> he guys. He's a great guy. One of the most likable guys in the entire league. Yes. So. Any success he gets is fine in my book. No, they haven't been great since Svechnikov went down. They're still good. Mm -hmm. They're not quite as good without him. But look, man, the Islanders are still the Islanders to me. I just don't think they've got the firepower to keep up. They're a little better. Barzal is going to play. He's in game one, so that's good news for them. I I picked the Hurricanes in five. I have the Hurricanes in six. I think the Islanders are going to be a very formidable opponent. Um, but I think the Hurricanes are still better over a seven-game series, even without Svechnikov and Petretti. I don't think they're as uh, heavily favored to maybe upset the Bruins and get out of the Eastern Conference as they were uh, earlier this year. But uh, I think six games gives the Islanders or gives the Hurricanes the, the series for me. Yeah, uh, I'm picking the Hurricanes in six as well. I, the Islanders have the better goaltender. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in, in Sorokin, and he's good enough to steal at least two games in that series. Yeah, he's 31, 22, and 7 with a 2.34 and a 9.24 I mean, save that's, percentage. That's, that's you impressive. Know, you know what yeah. that tells you? Know what that's 24. You know what, that, you know what those numbers add up to me? Vesna Trophy. <laughs> like, probably the best goalie in the league this mm-hmm. year, and the Islanders wouldn't be in the playoffs without him. Yeah. He could definitely steal some games, but I, I still think the firepower in Carolina is too good. Uh, but – Two things. If you if you are into like ex Blackhawks, then Carolina is your team. Yeah. In addition to Ante Ranta, they have t- our guy Tavo Teravainen and uh, Calvin DeHaan still on the uh, Hurricanes. So there and there are no ex Blackhawks on the Islanders. So screw those guys. Screw them. Um, <laughs> and but no matter what, no matter what team wins, we are guaranteed that a, Seb- a Sebastian Aho will <laughs> be playing in the second round That's of the true. Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah. That's right. Guaranteed That'll- that an Aho will advance. The Spider-Man pointing meme <laughs> come to life. All right, the next game we're going to move on to Speaking Boston and Florida. Uh, Boston enters the uh, playoffs as literally the best team ever, nine one and zero in their last ten. As they sort of shut things down before the playoffs, you know they wanted to take the foot off the gas, mm. so they ended nine one and zero. Florida, I think sneaking in is a is a way to say it. Uh, this is a team that won the President's Trophy last year yeah. that really kind of struggled to get started this year and never really kind of found their place, but they're in, and they're dangerous. Uh, Boston is dealing with some injuries. Bergeron, Swayman, Olmark are all game-time decisions uh, for the Bruins. Um, but then I look in goal for the Panthers, and I see Alex Lyon. And, yeah, he's played really well, but this is the MF in Boston Bruins. Hey, he won the Calder yeah. Cup. I was gonna say year. Calder Cup champion, Alex Lyon. Um, yeah, that's uh, it's a tall task. But who knows who's playing in goal for the Bruins? But the Bruins haven't played a meaningful game since Christmas, probably, where they've really needed to win. You know, um, and the, and the Panthers have been in playoff mode since like February, so. <laughs> There's something to go with that. Ask the 2019 Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. Sure. Uh, the Panthers, to their, you know, they split the season series. They went two and two against the Bruins. I don't think too many people have two wins against the Bruins this year. Hawks have one, my friends. Yes, yep. they do. Uh, and then they got their ass whooped in the other one. But that's, that's, that doesn't matter. <laughs> but uh, that being said, I still think 
the Bruins are, uh, are, are advancing here as much as I would love to see a, a, a upset. Cause I just, I love chaos and I don't like Boston, anything Boston, <laughs> like Jack Edwards crying on TV would be like the greatest thing ever. Cause that guy sucks. But anyway, I'm, I'm still taking the Bruins in six. I think the Panthers will, I think the Panthers surprise them tonight and get that game one win on the road. And then the Bruins wake up and like probably win three in a row, lose game five, and then win in game six. See that? Yeah, I also have the Bruins in six, and I the similar thought process is that to to flip the switch into playoff mode after you've kind of been, you know, not to say coasting, but games haven't really been the same, you know, uh, intensity probably once they've clinched and once they clinch the President's Trophy, it was kind of just like, well, now let's just make sure no one gets hurt. And they um, went 9-1-0. And then they still, yeah, they still go 9-1-0. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 th- I think it'll be interesting to see the, uh, the, the Marshawn, Matthew Kachuk, uh, you know, little, little battle there if they, uh, if they square up, which, I mean, it's the playoffs. Of course they're going to. Uh, so that'll be interesting to, to, to see. But, yeah, I think this Bruins team is just too good top to bottom to uh, be, be upset to uh to, to the Panthers so I have the Bruins in six but, but it's gonna be better see I don't see remember last year when it was just like whoever plays Colorado in the first round like enjoy your eight days yeah. of yeah. postseason I, I don't get that, that feeling <laughs> yeah I don't get that feeling with this series I think it's gonna be a, some really good games I think Florida's a lot different than what Nashville was last year and I think the Bruins are pretty close to what Colorado was last year too so it'll be. I think it'll be a good series. You got to remember some of those cup teams, the Hawks. They needed to get punched in the face that first game yeah. to wake them up. They yeah. lost game one of the 2010 mm-hmm. Cup run to the to the uh, Predators at home, and then they struggled those first couple games in 2015. They had to come back from three nothing. Mm-hmm. They ended up winning game one. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was when Scott Against Darling Nashville. came in and, yeah. and just played out of his mind. And then they they lost game two. So, you know, they, they needed a little wake-up call. I, I believe, what, 2013? 13, they, 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 got, they got through the wild pretty yeah, easily. Yeah, they kind of they yeah. won in five, I think, that year. Yeah. But So sometimes the team, as you said, they, they've kind of been on coast mode for a while, regardless of what they, the record shows. They've kind of, you know, so they may need a couple periods here to get, to get yeah. going. Yeah. It's interesting because you mentioned it, like the Panthers have been in playoff mode for months, which could be an advantage early. But then at what point are they just out of gas? Right. Because right. they've been pedaling in a metal for two months, whereas the Bruins have been coasting. And, yeah, maybe they get a little bit of rust early, but then they start finding their way again and catch up to the speed, and then they're really tough to beat. It's going to be a really good series. I've got the Bruins winning in six. Of course I'm rooting for the Panthers because of the ex-Blackhawk factor. Yep. Sure. Gustav Forsling. No. And Anthony Duclair. Anthony Duclair. Nope. And... Assistant coach Tuomo Rutu. Ah, oh, of course. Oh, my God. You are How could you yeah. forget? I might have to wear a Rutu jersey during this, uh, Why not? during this show to support the Panthers. Why not? I might have to do it. All right, next up, we've got a game that the nation, a series, rather, that the nation will very likely ignore that they should not. Mm-mm. The Dallas Stars and Minnesota Wild. I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be knocked down, drag out, down to the wire. I've got the Stars in seven just because I think they're just a little bit deeper. I like their goalie situation better. Philip Gustafson has been great for the Wild, but Jake Ottinger, we've seen him in playoff series, just absolutely steal the show, mm-hmm. keep them in games they've got no business being in. And guess what? This year, the Stars are in every game. There yeah. aren't games they don't have any business being in. I think Jason Robertson is one of the game's great young stars. Not really a controversial opinion, but I think <laughs> if you pull 100 people who identify as hockey fans, what team is Jason Robertson on, they might not know. Right. So they're going to find out because the kid is electric. He's awesome. Um, Eric Sinek is banged up for the wild, but he did participate in the morning skate, which would make a huge difference for them if he can play, even if not full strength. Um, but I think uh, at the end, when the smoke clears, uh, Dallas is too much. I got the stars in seven. I also have the stars in seven. I think, you know, if there, if for me, if there is a, a, a player – one specific player that I am pulling for to win a Stanley Cup, it is Joe Pavelski. Um, a, a big Badger bias coming out of that opinion. But I think, <laughs> okay. you know, he's he's one of those players that's kind of like universally liked around the NHL. Like, I, I can't think of many fans or teammates that, that do not like Joe Pavelski for any reason other than uh, maybe he beat my team once or twice. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's someone that I'm, that I'm pulling for to, to win a Stanley cup before it's all said and done in his career, which could be coming up soon. 
Uh, you got Max Domi with the with the stars, so that's uh, an ex Blackhawk to, to to pay attention to. And and look, I I think, you know, this is this is a team that, like you said, like with Jake Ottinger, like kept them in that series last year, where they were you know an overtime game seven, uh, Stop loss, eighty seven oh, shots away, or yeah, away from going on <laughs> yeah. to the next round. So now you get, uh, you know, Ottinger, another year developed, another year older, another year experienced. Um, he's I think he's. He's going to be really good for them. And, yeah, I, I, it's it, another fun storyline is John Klingberg with the Wild and um, Ryan Suter with the Stars yeah. facing their former teams. I think that's going to be a lot that's of fun. That's cool. Hey, yep. Minnesota finally has a chance to get revenge on Texas for stealing the North Stars. There you go. The, well, I, I heard only one of these teams will uh, stay in the NHL after this, right? I hope so. <laughs> By the way, uh, Ryan Suter it has a place in CHGO sports history. Yes. He was he, the first of the rumored the, Pudwax. The original show Pudwax. History. He's the original rumored the original Pudwax. Pudwax. He's yes. the founder of the rumored <laughs> Pudwax. Pudwax. Rumored Pudwax Society of yes. America. We have the rumored. And Canada. Not to be confused with the confirmed Pudwax. <laughs> yes. Totally different. Totally different categories. Um, <laughs> Much bigger, by the yes. way. That oh, yeah. Um, I am uh, picking the Minnesota Wild to win in seven. I know it's fun to pick the Wild to lose in the first round because that's kind of what they do. But they I think. a lot. I think this is your Dallas to me. Yeah, they've got the right mix of, of, of veterans and they got some exciting young players, the goalie, they got a solid goalie. But for whatever reason, the past few seasons, whenever they get to the playoffs, they forget how to score goals. Yeah, that's you mm-hmm. And those. the last time I checked, you need to score <laughs> goals. Um, Philip Gustafson, Gustafson looks like he's starting game one for Minnesota. So, you know, you know it's April when Mark Andre Fleury loses his starting job. We've seen it happen. But he is starting confirmed, by yes. the way. Yes, and uh, looks like Erickson, Erickson Eck took play, uh, part in the morning skate today, but head coach Dean Evenson did not say if he was playing or not. That's all updates from uh, Michael Russo, who does a great job covering the Wild for the Athletic. Uh, so I'm going to pick the Wild in seven. I think this postseason – is going to be the coming out party for Kirill Kaprizov. Be great. He's kind of fresh because he missed a, a bunch of a bunch of games. He missed yeah. a, quite a bit of time, so he's kind of got for fresh legs. Team. He's 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 missed time. He's healthy now. He didn't have to go through those last month grind and play all those tough games. Yeah. That might just be the thing to put him over. And that that kid is so fun to watch. And I'm picking the Wild in seven mainly because I want to see Kaprizov play more than just one round. Yeah, I hope you're right. I like you guys know I like the Wild. There's this odd thing about them that I like. I don't know what it is. They're harmless. You're gonna, you're gonna put on your uh, <laughs> I got Minnesota the Wild dad hat my with dad your Rutu jersey. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah wear that in my Rutu jersey, jersey exactly. And then you gotta wear your uh, lawn stained New Balances too. Complete the dad. Outfit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My beef sleeve came today. Hey, yes. Wednesday we got the that read. I mean, a lot of things. I'm going to fill it up with some uh, with some Italian oh, please, beef please before I come in. Please don't do that. That I'm sounds terrible. It. Yep, yep. All right, uh, we're all good. We got our picks in there, everybody. Yep. All right, last one. Uh, late night tonight. Oilers and Kings. The Oilers are nine zero and one coming into the playoffs. They are red hot. Pretty the good. Kings five five and zero. Um, we talked about it all season. This West feels wide open, and if the Oilers are going to have a shot at the Stanley Cup. This, at least getting to the final, this might be their best and easiest road. Um, look, they're a really good team, and I think we look back in history and see their failures and their shortcomings, and very much like Alex Ovechkin in the Capitals, where they didn't win, didn't win, didn't win until mm-hmm. they did, right? That was kind of the reputation. And until you shake that reputation, that's the reputation. But I think the Oilers have as good a shot as anybody to come out of the West. We don't have to tell you about their superstar power, of course, um, they're really good. However, I was reading uh, Dom Lashishishin's preview of the Kings, and I think Shana Goldman was on that too. Were there graphs in it? There were a lot of graphs. A lot of graphs. But they were graphs, readable. Graphs and numbers. Yeah, so, um, and they broke it down, and like when you look at it, the Kings are like the one team defensively that might be able to slow down the Oilers a little bit. You've mm-hmm. got good defensive forwards with Deneau, Kopitar, uh, of course, uh, Gavrikov has been great for them since they made that trade. Um, there, I mean, I don't see it. I think what we're seeing here, and, and you mentioned it um, with the uh, – what team did you say we got off to a slow start? The Bruins. Bruins. I could see the Oilers maybe losing game one, and then a little bit of that panic sets in, and maybe they're down 2-1 or something, and then they find it at the end. And I think they're going to win it in seven. 
But I think it's going to be scary early, and then they're going to win maybe three in a row or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 going to go with the Oilers in six. Uh, I think, like you said, like this seems like they're, you know, they went to the Western Final last year and then you know got ran up on the the, the Colorado Avalanche this year. Uh, again, I, I feel like getting to the conference final and getting over that hump is is really in reach. McDavid and Drysital uh, power the engine, and those are the 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 two you know, most powerful, you know, pushers of a team that you could really have paired together. Um, and, and I think, you know, this, this, we saw it last year, this, this, this uh, matchup with the Kings and the Oilers. And I think, you know, the Oilers or uh, rather the Kings, you know, they need to try and keep pace scoring with the, with the Oilers. So I think that's going to be, that's going to be a big challenge uh, for them. I have the Oilers in six. Uh, the goaltending matchup is very interesting. Eunice Corpusalo and Stuart Skinner, like definitely not headline marquee names yeah. that you'd think of. So we might be treated to a couple high scoring games, uh, which would be a lot of fun with these two teams. But yeah, it's going to come up to the Kings having to keep pace with them offensively. And I'm not sure they have the horses to do it. Yeah. Um, I am taking the Oilers as well. They're actually my pick. Uh, spoiler alert in our bracket challenge to win the Stanley Cup. Oh, wow. Uh, I think this is the year they finally get over the hump. Two reasons. A, Mike Smith is no longer their goalie. It's <laughs> a big reason. You can put anybody back there and you've <laughs> automatically improved. Mike Smith will not lose two games a series for being Mike Smith. Yes. Correct. And Stuart Skinner's been really good. I know he doesn't have much Stanley Stuart Cup playoff Skinner. experience and he's got kind of a name that makes me think of like uh, either Letter Kenny or. Uh, or uh, the kid from Beavis and Butthead that wore the winger shirt. Um, <laughs> but against the Kings this year, he played in all four games. He came in the relief for Jack Campbell in one of those games, started the other three. Uh, against the Kings, he was 2 1 0 with a 950 save percentage and a 1.78 goals against average. That's good. That's pretty good. That's, yeah. And then Matthias Ekholm, the addition of him been awesome. has been so. Big exactly what they need. They, they, yeah. The two things we've been saying they needed for the last four years, better defense, better goaltending, they've got them both. Mm -hmm. They don't need to score seven goals a game anymore. At least they, they can, shouldn't though. have to. They can. They, can. they still can. They don't have to yeah. because they don't have Mike Smith in goal anymore. Yeah. That's huge. <laughs> that is huge. That guy sucks, and he's gone. I'm still going to throw in some cheap shots. You know, which house is he in the confirmed Pudwack house or is he in the alleged Pudwack house? <sighs> Everything I've heard of <laughs> from guys, my guy, uh, Jason Shaver, the longtime play by play announcer for the Chicago Wolves, always sends me a text when I rag on Mike Smith saying that Mike Smith is like legitimately a really good guy. He's just kind of a clown on the ice. That's so fun. So, I yeah. Like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hate when they're like douchey players but good guys because then it makes yeah. you feel conflicted. So I kind of <laughs> wish he never told me that. Not but really. uh, So I'm going to say he's in the on-ice Pudwack. Uh, <laughs> the on-ice. On he's an on-ice Pudwack. The Pudwack off, Ice House. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But anywho, it's, it's the Oilers in six in this series. I just don't think the Kings have enough uh, to, to go to run the horses with, with McDavid and Dreisaitl. Yeah. yeah. And I'm picking the, the Oilers to win the cup because I want to see four rounds of Connor McDavid. Yes, we all do. Be that great. would be great. That would be good for the NHL. All right, there is tonight's matchups. We're going to preview uh, more playoff matchups tomorrow along with some other stuff and things on tomorrow's show. One final reminder, sign up for our bracket challenge. Do it right now at all at CHGO underscore Blackhawks on Twitter. That's where you sign up. It is the pinned tweet at the very, very top of our account. Use that password, CAPTAIN19, all caps, CAPTAIN, and the number 19 after that. Very, very easy. And make sure you change that entry name to your email address so we can track you down when you win. Last year's winner was named Jeremy Colleton, and we couldn't find him. Well, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't get his Vancouver uh, right. address. Is, yeah, where is, that, where is that town he's from? Blackie, Alberta, or something like that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if he's still there, but yeah. Smarter than your own, than you think you are, Alberta? I don't know. Yeah, Blackie, Alberta. Blackie, Alberta. Blackie? Interesting. Yep. Yeah. As like he's a lackey. That's that's no that's, Blackie. No Blackie. Blackie as like in Boston Colum, Blackie. As in Colin Blackwell. Yes. Who yes. Alex Velasquez at dinner? Yes. There you go. 
Uh, that's why his like, Twitter name is like Blackie Hubcap or something. I don't, yeah. And then say something bad about him and his wife finds you. Maybe. <laughs> Watch <laughs> out. <laughs> Watch all out. right. Watch out for those coach wives. We will talk to you all tomorrow. <laughs> Two o'clock is the time. One final reminder, reminder that we're presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app. And use promo code CHGO. Thanks to uh, Anders Sorensen yes. and Alex Vlasic for Absolutely. joining the show. That was a lot of fun. If you are able to get out to Rockford Wednesday night, uh, tickets are available. Do so. Pack the BMO as much as you can uh, to give the Ice Hogs that home ice advantage for that first game of their play-in series. Uh, I think we'll be out there. I I'm, can't make it Wednesday night. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be making the trip at least. I don't know, Greg, if you're. Gonna I come have with. to have a conversation at home before I know if I'm uh, making that or not. All right. There were well, some there were some plans made, so I might not be able to hit that first one. But hopefully, there's one a of us will round. be out there. Somebody from <laughs> CH Joe, at least one of us will be there. Maybe two. Yep. So yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll be out there. It's uh, should be a good atmosphere. So looking forward to that. All right, we'll talk to you tomorrow at two o'clock on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.